G'day, it's uh, Dan here from League of Brewers, top of the south New Zealand. Um, and I'm here in my home brewery today to explain to you how to save some CO2. So here in New Zealand we've had a bit of a shortage of CO2 uh, recently. And uh, last week our 5, cage, 5 kilo bottle went up 20 bucks overnight for a refill. So I was just thinking of uh, ways how we could uh, you know, save on CO2. So uh, one thing I came up with here today is um, how to purge your kegs during fermentation. So um, after doing a bit of research, I found that basically a 20 litre batch of beer or cider will off gas around about 400 to 500 litres of uh, pure CO2. So that's a lot of CO2. You put that all together, um, basically you could purge 25 corny kegs um, with a 20 litre fermentation. So today here I've got uh, my 19 litre standard corny keg, um, which is daisy chained to a 5 litre keg, and it's off gassing here as you can see. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it is bubbling away here. Um, and that is from the, the fermentation happening inside this fridge here. So. I'm going to open up the fridge here. Uh, basically, I've got a, um, a firm Zilla. Um, it's pretty much into the secondary now, so um, most of the CO2 from this fermentation has already um, gone through and purged these kegs. Um, so, yeah, basically, I'm coming, coming out of my firm Zilla here through a, a gas hose, through the door. Um, in the door here, I've got a a uh, female to female duo type bulkhead. Um, that's really really handy for getting a good seal in your in your fridge door. Out the other side, down through here, very important, I'm going down through the liquid pickup tube, or known as a liquid dip tube, which feeds the CO2 to the bottom of the keg, which over the course of the uh, fermentation brings up all the gets rid of all the CO2, uh, sorry, all of the oxygen, um, which then comes out the top of the gas tube. Um, you could stop it there, or you could put a, um, you, you know, you could put your your blow off directly into um, your sanitizer here. But in this case, I'm taking it further into my second keg, down the liquid tube of the mini keg, which is venting out of the gas tube down into my sanitizer. So, yeah, um, I'm pretty pretty confident here that um, these are pretty much purged by now. And when it comes time to uh, kegging, um, I'll be able to just go straight in here into my sanitised kegs and um, save on using CO2, which I'm having to purchase from uh, my local CO2 provider. So, at this stage here, um, I'm ready to actually lock... The fermentation down um, I'm wanting to build some pressure and, and let the yeast uh, ferment the beer uh, sorry carbonate the beer as well and that's the great thing about a uh, pressure vessel like the Firmzilla that's also saving CO2 because you're letting the yeast carbonate the beer as it's fermenting so there's a couple of methods to to the madness of uh, pressure fermenting um, I've just dry hopped now um, so I'm now going to start locking this down and um, carbonating my beer. So over here I have a spunding valve um, and I'm going to take off my blow off tube from my keg and I'm going to attach my spunning valve directly to my keg. Now the reason for that um, is I'm going to show you in the second part of this video um, I'm going to, while I'm pressurising these kegs so I'm also going to pressurise the kegs and the fermentation at the same time so yeah I'll follow up with uh, a, um, a second video when I go to keg this um, and yeah we'll be able to show you how to um, save CO2 once again right so we're back here um, I'm basically finished the, the fermentation here and the keg um, is fully purged from CO2. It is under pressure, it's equal pressure 
as what the Firmzilla is here. So basically, um, the transfer I'm about to do here is going to be a gravity transfer, but it's going to be under pressure. So I'm going to change the connection over from on the keg here. So basically, I've been purging from uh, down the liquid line. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to swap my corner keg over and I'm going to put my gas connection onto my gas post on my corner keg. So here we go, I've got equal pressure, equal pressure. Now I'm going to connect my transfer line, my bare transfer line that is, to my corner keg. I might have put slightly more pressure in here just to just to get the, the transfer started but basically you get the gist of what's about to happen here. Now I'll connect that to the keg and nothing happens. So basically I don't have enough pressure in the Firmzilla to transfer the beer or to get it started at least. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the gas going to bring my trusty CO2 bottle over here, which will have slightly more pressure than what is in the keg. And I'm going to attach that and get the transfer started. So you can see that the bear is now transferring into the keg. And I'm going to quickly disconnect the gas and reconnect the return line. So this will be the return line going back through the door back into the top of the Firmzilla. So this is the first time I've actually done this um, using gravity to, to transfer beer under pressure. So I'm guessing it's going to take quite a while um, but in terms of saving CO2 that's a win so it's it's worth the time. So yeah we'll be back in um, I don't know how long but uh, yeah, enjoy the transfer, we'll be back soon. So as you can see here, the, the transfer is working. I have equal pressure in my keg. I have equal pressure in my Firmzilla. The bear is transferring uh, via gravity. Um, so I did raise this up slightly to give it a better drop. Um, but yeah, you can see the bear line, that's where it started, where the Krausen line is there. And it is transferring quite relatively quick, quicker than I expected, so that's great. I've got probably about 16 to 17 psi in this closed line here. So the beer's still carbonated, it's cold, uh, the keg was sanitized, it's purged from the fermentation, and basically I'm just using um, a, a gravity trans closed transfer under pressure so we are fully way through the transfer here the keg is now full and I still have some beer left in the fermenter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, trusty rigger here um, which is being purged of course um, with CO2 and sanitized and I'm going to connect my beer connector to the rigger and I'm going to return the CO2 back into the fermenter. I've transferred a whole keg of air in a closed transfer system here under pressure. Um, I've used no CO2 to push the beer out into the keg. The kegs, the beer is sitting at 16.5 psi. One thing I'll mention is that. Um, the only time I actually did use CO2 in this process was during the crash call. So uh, when you're crash calling, it's uh, basically retracting. So you're sucking in and losing um, positive pressure. I know that if, you, if you're under 16 psi, um, you know when you crash call in that process, you might end up with 13, 12. I don't know, 10, I'm taking a guess, um, um, of pressure that is lost during that cooling process. So 
when you're crash cooling, um, it's a good idea to keep that keep that same pressure of what you've been um, fermenting under um, to keep that the uh, carbonation in the beer. So that's the only time uh, the crash cool tip was overnight. So I, I might have used the you know a couple of liters of CO2, if that, to keep that same amount of pressure in the firmzilla. Rigger that uh, I have filled here is completely full. I've still got a little bit of beer left in my firmzilla, which uh, I don't know. I think I might just uh, forfeit that one. But uh, yeah, I've disconnected my gas from my rigger filler. I'll disconnect my beer from the rigger filler. And I am completely under pressure here. So it's basically a rigger, a simple carbonation tea, a gas disconnect, um, carbonation cap, sorry, and a, a beer carbonation cap. So yeah, that's, um, that's filled under pressure. And I'm just going to show you the pressure that that is still under. Let's turn that on. Here we are. We're under 15, oh that was 15.1 psi. So that that's pretty much a carbonated beer there. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, I'll put that in the fridge and um, have it another time. Yeah, thanks for watching guys and uh, love to hear anyone that's sort of doing the similar sort of process. If you've got anything to share, please comment. Uh, it's, uh, it's about saving CO2. And um, yeah, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We're on Instagram, Facebook. Enjoy and uh, happy brewing. All the best. Cheers.